remember the time when it was normal to go out with friends to have a drink? Maybe you've noticed that often the waiter knows within seconds how much the different drinks you ordered cost together. And there is that one friend that may already have calculated how to split the bill before others even had the time to begin figuring out the math. And then you have that one friend in the corner who already shivers when only thinking about having to do mental arithmetic. That right there is an illustration of the large individual differences in arithmetic skills. Now you may wonder, are these individual differences in arithmetic skills important now that we all have a calculator in our pocket? What if I tell you that this does matter? as numerous studies have indicated that arithmetic skills are related to job prospects, income and quality of life. But arithmetic skills are not only related to later life outcomes. Think about all the young children, their teachers and parents who are surrounded by arithmetic in daily life and for some of whom this may not be as easy as one, two, three. To pave the way for improving future perspectives for the learning child, we must first know which factors are associated with arithmetic performance. That was precisely the aim of the current doctoral dissertation. Surely, arithmetic performance is rooted in a complex interplay of processes, encompassing many different pieces of the puzzle. Now could it be that an important piece of this complex puzzle can be found in ancient Greece? Let's find out together. Hi, my name is Eline and I did my PhD research at the KU Leuven. Today I'm going to introduce you to the topic of my doctoral dissertation and you will find out what I've been up to during the last four years. At the end of this presentation, you will see why I think that metacognition counts too. First, let us have a look at arithmetic and why there are such large individual differences in arithmetic performance and development. Think back to the example of the drinks with friends. Experience with arithmetic might be one explanation for the huge individual differences in arithmetic performance we see there. Yet such differences in arithmetic already appear early in life, in young primary school children. Thus experience is surely only one piece of the puzzle of individual differences in arithmetic. Imagine you are in an average primary school. It's math class. Anna is really good at arithmetic and solves this example immediately. Stefan on the other hand struggles with even the most basic arithmetic items. Maybe you identify with one of them. But why do we see such large individual differences in arithmetic? What has science taught us already? Different factors have been identified, such as number sense, executive functions and math anxiety. We'll now take a closer look at these factors, because I have also included these in my research. The first piece of the puzzle is numerical magnitude processing, or number sense. We use this skill in everyday life. For example, when you choose a cash register in the supermarket based on how many items the people waiting in line in front of you have. In my dissertation, I measured this by letting the participating children indicate as fast as they could which of two presented numbers was the largest. Executive functions are another piece of the puzzle of arithmetic. These functions allow you to concentrate and engage in goal-directed behavior. They include working memory, but also, for example, inhibition. Inhibition helps you to control your attention and suppress irrelevant information. You may know this inhibition task where you have to name the color of the ink instead of the color word. In this example, the correct response is thus green and not red. A third piece of the puzzle is math anxiety, which refers to feeling anxious and stressed when confronted with math or arithmetic. Maybe you recognize this yourself. To measure math anxiety, we asked the participants to indicate how stressed they would feel in certain situations, which all had to do with being confronted with or doing mathematics. So, we have now seen different pieces of the puzzle that may explain why there are such large individual differences in arithmetic performance. But how do they fit together? 
and it seems that there are still some pieces missing. Let us zoom in on what I have added to this puzzle with my doctoral dissertation, which was focused on metacognition. Metacognition is usually defined as thinking about your thinking. It's a crucial skill in various domains, as it helps you reflect on your cognition and behavior, and may act as your personal control center. Now you may wonder, why would metacognition be related to arithmetic? Let's take a look at an example. Anna and Stefan have to solve 7 times 8. Different processes are at play when solving this item. For example, their number sense may help them realize that their answer has to be more than 7 or 8, but certainly less than 100. But also good inhibition skills may come in handy to suppress the solutions to other, related arithmetic items that pop up in their head when solving this arithmetic item. Now, if they correctly solve this arithmetic item over and over again, there is a high chance that they will continue to solve it correctly in the future. However, if they fail to do this correctly and make the same mistake over and over again, chances are high that they will continue to make this mistake in the future. Now, this is where metacognition may have a role to play. For this example, let's say you can have good or bad metacognition. If you have good metacognitive skills and you make a mistake, you realize this is a mistake. Next time, you may do it right and realize you did so. Thanks to your metacognitive skills, you're back on track. However, when you have bad metacognition, two things may happen. You may make a mistake, think this is correct, and continue to make the same mistake. Or, you make a mistake, you have no idea whether it's right or wrong, and anything can happen thereafter. This example indicates that metacognitive skills can provide children with a learning moment when an error is detected. In my dissertation, I focused on this metacognitive monitoring skill, namely, whether children are good at noticing when they are correct and when they make a mistake. Now, we need a way of measuring this metacognitive monitoring skill. Therefore, I have looked at how good the participants' judgments on their performance were. Imagine I ask you two things. First, I ask you what you had for dinner this time last week. Maybe you are uncertain about this, but you make a rough guess. Second, I ask you what you had for breakfast this morning. You may feel more certain answering that. So maybe you can give an answer to both questions. But your confidence in the answer may differ, or you may even think that you gave the wrong answer to one of the questions. We use these judgments on the correctness of the response to measure metacognition. To do that in young primary school children, we use a very specific arithmetic task. First, the children saw an arithmetic item that they needed to solve. After each arithmetic item, they had to indicate whether they thought their answer was right, wrong, or whether they were uncertain. Do you also want to get an idea of how well you are able to judge your performance? Try it by using the link via this QR code. We use the combination of the actual arithmetic performance of the child and the child's judgment of that performance to measure the metacognitive skills of the children. When the child correctly solved the arithmetic item and said they were correct, they got points. When they were wrong and they noticed this mistake, they also got points. However, when the child correctly solved the arithmetic item but thought it was incorrect, no points were given. Similarly, when the child made an arithmetic error but thought it was correct, no points were given. We now know what metacognition is and how we measured it. Let's take a look at the different studies in which I investigated the role of metacognition in arithmetic. As metacognition is only one piece of the puzzle, I investigated its role in arithmetic on top of other cognitive factors, such as number sense and executive functions. If for one second now you think about the difference in arithmetic skills between a second grader and a fourth grader, 
you will immediately notice that there are large individual differences. Therefore, I investigated the role of metacognition in arithmetic in different ages of primary school. A group of more than 120 children participated in this study. I tested them in their school when they were in second grade and one year later when they were in third grade. Now what did we find in this study? When we investigated all these pieces of the puzzle together, number sense and executive functions, as well as metacognition, were associated with arithmetic performance in second grade. In third grade, once the children had more experience with arithmetic, only number sense and metacognition appeared to play a role. Now what about math anxiety? Does being math anxious or not have an influence on the association we found between metacognition and arithmetic? So in this study, I investigated whether the association that we found between metacognition and arithmetic was affected by effect. We already know that math anxious children tend to show lower arithmetic performance than their non-math anxious peers. Maybe being math anxious also impacts the association between metacognition and arithmetic. For example, math anxious children might be less accurate in judging their performance and frequently underestimate themselves. My research indicated that math anxiety in children does not affect the association that we found between metacognition and arithmetic. This association is thus present in both math anxious and non-math anxious children. In the previous studies, I investigated metacognition at the behavioral level. Let's now look at what happens in the brain when children are thinking about their thinking. Which region in the brain is responsible for metacognition in children? To figure this out, I invited the same children to participate in a brain imaging study with an MRI scanner. They were now in fourth grade. Here you can see the brave young participants in the MRI scanner. In the scanner, they again got some arithmetic items together with the metacognitive question. The existing research in both the domain of arithmetic and metacognition has already taught us something about how the brain works. This, for example, is an image of the brain network that is active when doing arithmetic. And here you see the regions of the brain responsible for metacognition in adults. Now what can we learn about metacognition in the child's brain? In this study, we uncovered the neurobiological basis of metacognition in young primary school children. The brain region responsible for this is situated in the prefrontal cortex, in the front of the brain. More specifically, in the left inferior frontal gyrus. This region responsible for metacognition in children is similar to the region for metacognition found in adults. And, importantly, the left inferior frontal gyrus is also found in the brain network that is active when we do arithmetic. These results indicate that there is overlap in brain regions responsible for arithmetic and metacognition in children. Until now, we have looked at the role of metacognition in arithmetic. Now you may wonder whether this role of metacognition that I found in arithmetic is a specific one, or whether it reflects a more general role of metacognition in diverse academic domains. To examine whether this was the case, two new groups of children participated in my research. One group in second grade and one group in third grade. Metacognitive skills in young children are often thought about as being domain-specific. That means that children may have good metacognitive skills in one domain, but not in the other, and that their metacognitive skills in different domains are unrelated. In adults, on the other hand, metacognition is thought of as being domain-general. That means that when you are good at estimating your performance in one domain, you are very likely to be good at it in another domain. Metacognitive skills in different domains are thought to be highly related. However, we don't know when this shift from domain specificity towards domain generality of metacognition occurs. In my PhD, we pinpointed this moment as between second and third grade. 
in second grade, metacognition in arithmetic is unrelated to metacognition in spelling. In third grade, they are highly related. So, in conclusion, does metacognition count too? Do we find the role of metacognition on top of other cognitive factors? Yes. Do we find this unique role of metacognition over development and thus in different grades of primary school? Yes. Is the association between metacognition and arithmetic dependent on math anxiety and thus affected by effect? No. Where in the brain do we find the region responsible for metacognition in children and is this connected to arithmetic? Yes. We found it in the left inferior frontal gyrus, a region important for both metacognition and arithmetic. Is the relation between metacognition and arithmetic domain specific? Yes and no. In early primary school, it is domain specific. And from third grade onwards, it's more domain general. We may thus conclude that metacognition counts too. Now all this thinking about how important it is to know when you're right or wrong made me think of something someone already told us centuries ago. True knowledge is to know that you know nothing. The author of that phrase was indeed Socrates. With my PhD, I thus indeed found a piece of the puzzle in ancient Greece. However, I prefer a more positive interpretation of the results of my PhD. True knowledge is to know what you do know. Now you may think, so what? Why is this so relevant? Is this of importance for Anna and Stefan and their teacher and parents? What made this PhD research teach us? Both science and education benefit from a good understanding of the factors that underlie the development of arithmetic in primary school children. Scientific work, such as this dissertation, may provide insight into these factors. These can then be targets for instructional approaches, as well as for future studies on how to build interventions for arithmetic skills, so that these interventions can be evidence-informed. For example, my dissertation may provide a step towards designing an arithmetic intervention in which we not only present children with arithmetic items, but also make them reflect on the correctness of their answer to the item. By adding this metacognitive question, perhaps we can create the learning moment we talked about earlier. Together with providing feedback on the arithmetic answer, this might be especially promising. Why, you may ask? We know that getting feedback on your performance is especially helpful for low confidence responses. Now think back to Stefan. He solves an arithmetic item, but is unsure about whether his answer was correct. However, he gets the feedback that his answer was correct after all. This surprises Stefan. He explicitly indicated he felt unsure, but now realizes that this was unjustified. As a result, his learning moment may have been boosted. And what about the teachers? What may they learn from my dissertation? Well, we found that metacognition in children goes from being domain specific towards being more domain general between second and third grade. This knowledge may be useful for teachers who want to bolster metacognitive skills of their students. They may then decide to do this explicitly in different academic domains in younger children, while starting from third grade, they may do this in certain domains, expecting it to transfer to other domains. Maybe most of all, research such as the current dissertation may demonstrate to teachers and parents that there are many different reasons why children may struggle with or thrive at arithmetic. There are indeed many pieces to this complex puzzle of arithmetic. Before we can intervene in the development of struggling learners or further boost the development of children thriving at arithmetic, first of all we must be aware of the different skills that are involved when doing arithmetic. Sometimes that may be truly puzzling. With this dissertation I have put the piece of metacognition inside, because metacognition counts too.